Come along as I take you with me to build my dream project, a large bioactive Tegu terrarium. This detailed European guide can be scaled up or down to accommodate any reptile species, so let your imagination run wild and enjoy the build. I certainly did. In the third episode we're gonna talk about installations, electrical wiring and custom background. Now that the general structure is finished, we can work on the inside of the terrarium. We're gonna start by hydro insulating every nook and corner where the sheets are meeting. So you have to grab some silicone and apply a thick layer of it uh, along the edges. You can work with uh, a silicone that's destined for outside use, like the previously mentioned Cherry Seed FT101. When working with silicone, always use gloves and use your finger to just spread the thick layer around evenly. Now comes the crucial part for having a long-lived terrarium. You have to hydro-insulate the whole interior of the terrarium. Although the Tego sheets are technically waterproof, I will still cover them up with hydro-insulation. As you have seen, I worked with uh, rubber seal from Biosun. It's a rubber-based hydro-insulator, non-toxic, so it's not dangerous to animals, making it an ideal coating for the terrarium. I also recommend using the rubber seal bands for the corners and the edges, but I didn't use it since I couldn't find it anywhere available at that time. In order to spread this liquid viscous hydro insulation around, just use a regular brush. Uh, as I found later out, it's more practical to use a wider and thicker brush and also use gloves since it's a very sticky substance that will stick to your skin and if you don't wash it off right away, it will come up with hair and uh, superficial layers of the skin. Although it dries very quickly outside, in such a closed environment inside, it takes a while longer, so you have to let it sit for a few hours to uh, coat the, another layer on top of it and it will still retain some degree of stickiness for a while. Apply at least 5 layers and take into account that the Tegu has sharp claws that can scratch the superficial layers. In order to maintain the high humidity a Tegu needs, you have two options. Either install a water feature or have a misting system set up. I've opted for a water feature, it's cheaper and far more aesthetically pleasing. Use the position of your waterfall, preferably in the coolest part of your terrarium, and start with the plumbing, or the pipe that will take the water from the main tank up to a waterfall. I've opted for a pipe that is used in uh, heating systems, it's flexible, it maintains it, its form after you bend it, and some uh, holders for the pipe, and everything screwed on. And now to the tricky part the custom background. I'll be starting out in a traditional way by carving out polystyrene sheets. First I have mounted some screws on the back wall to secure the first layer of polystyrene sheet even further. I have used 10 cm thick 100 cm by 50 cm uh, expanded polystyrene sheets that can hold up to 100 kg of compression. It is somewhat easier to obtain naturally looking carvings and shapes out of extruded polystyrene sheets and it is far cleaner to work with, but it's also way more expensive, like 10 times more expensive as expanded polystyrene sheets. Apply polystyrene adhesive to the back of your sheets, preferably using a gun designed for this and start applying them to the back of your terrarium. Mm -hmm. 
by choosing an L-shaped or U-shaped background, the whole structure will be far more stable. When working with expanded polystyrene, things tend to get messy really quickly, as you will see further down the road. And here is me applying again another layer of polystyrene sheets. We're using the gun to spray the polystyrene adhesive on the back of the sheets and then applying the sheets to the previous layer. Because the terrarium will be a bioactive and green one with only natural plants, we need to provide enough topsoil for the plants to thrive. That means I've ended up applying three layers of polystyrene sheets with a total of 30 centimeters thickness plus some extra layers to create uh, 3D elements and further depth that you will see when I get to the carving part. I started planning out the waterfall and applied extra layers, as I mentioned before, to create 3D elements. Many will tell you that stegos are very destructive and natural plants won't survive in your terrarium, which is partly true. In order to maximize the success rate of keeping natural plants in the tego enclosure, you have to keep them out of reach from the lizard, and that is what those 3D elements sticking out are for. They are a natural barrier when the lizard decides to climb or study the surrounding areas and they will accommodate more topsoil for the plants that are suspended above, giving the illusion that the whole terrarium is green when in fact most of the greenery is above, not below. A lot of reptile keepers out there that are far more artistic that, than I am and have far more experience in creating custom backgrounds will tell you that you better have a lot of images available to get your inspiration from to achieve natural looking features, which is one way to go and to be frankly I didn't have the necessary patience nor the time to achieve such a level of detail but I still wanted the background to look fairly natural which is why I opted for the traditional carving techniques I got a regular knife and a polystyrene knife and got cutting also some sculpting tools to further dig into the poly polystyrene and achieve the necessary space for my plants, but I didn't follow any particular model or feature. I just knew I wanted a degree of randomness in my background and I followed a general plan, but I just went with it. Whatever came to mind, I just went with the flow and carved away. The large custom background ended up to be the most exhausting, time-consuming and difficult part of building the enclosure. So take your time and expect it to take a very long time.
Here is another tool that I have used to obtain naturally looking shapes, corners, sharp edges and angles. Uh, it's an electric polystyrene cutter and just don't spend money on the professional ones that can go from 100 euros upwards. Just look on AliExpress for cheap ones like the one I'm holding. They're about 5 euros and they do the job very well for custom backgrounds. When designing your custom background, have plenty of elements that are sticking out, irregularities, bumps and even large elements like the one I'm working on. It's supposed to be half of a boulder that is sticking out of the rock face. It will give a sense of depth and the effect will be far more dramatic compared to the background in only one plane. You'll also have a lot of garbage after you're done carving. Another trick I have used to apply a finish to this design is to use the power of fire. I said the power of fire. Power of fire! Now. You need a small handheld burner with a small gas canister. And these are used mainly in pipe works to melt and bend pipes. Although it looks dangerous and like I'm not really sure what I'm doing, polystyrene is actually fireproof and will only melt giving a more natural look and a smoother transition between the edges and the corners. It also gives off very toxic fumes, so do this only in a well-ventilated area. It also roughens up the surface a little more for the next phase, the grouting. Now for the next part we will cover the polystyrene in grout and you will need a bucket, a scale to weigh your mixture and just add water and mix it all together with a cement mixer that you can add to your power drill. Now for the first layer I have used another type of polystyrene adhesive from Sika in order to create a proper surface between the polystyrene and the next cement based layer. In hindsight I can tell you that you can skip this step since the used uh, cement based uh, hydro insulations will stick to the polystyrene anyways and we will prepare them in a more viscous manner in order to apply them by hand since you have many nooks and cracks and dents and stuff sticking out and you can't really get in those areas only by hand. As you can see I have installed the protection foil on the glass window. I have taken uh, sliding glass doors out to protect them and I've also applied a foil on the bottom. In designing my background I also accounted for the hide slash hotspot area where the tag will be basking illustrated here. Since Tegu claws are very big and sharp and with any other large reptile or like monitor lizards uh, you won't get away with using regular grout for the next layer. 
it simply isn't strong enough. So what I uh, have been using is uh, Cherisit CM17. That's a tile adhesive for outside, a cement based tile adhesive that is very strong and uh, also hydro insulates and is uh, resistant to outside conditions. So it will last even longer inside. The next three layers are a combination of two crystallizing hydro insulations, Cheresit CR90 and CR100. CR100 is a hydro insulation that is used in water tanks and can also withstand flowing water, so mechanical stress, and will therefore be used mainly on the waterfall part of the terrarium. The other worlds will be coated in uh, Cheresit CR90 and the whole thing is applied with a brushing technique. That means that you add a little more water or in case of Cheresit CR100 a little more component B and you get a more liquid paste that you can paint on with a regular brush and you can get inside all those cracks and nooks with the brush. Since the product sheet recommends applying the next layer within three hours of the previous one, I had a little help so that we could cover up the entire surface in due time and apply the next layer for a proper crystallization process and a proper waterproof surface. In parallel with the custom background, I have pieced together a simple box out of polystyrene scraps and went away and carved uh, on it on the edges, made some rock formations in a corner to create a small pond in which all the water from the waterfall will drain. The same kind of hydro insulating layers are applied as for the custom background. I have also included a hole to keep the tube from the pump in place. Two more layers of pigmented Cheresit CM17 are added and three more layers of rubber based hydro insulation. This is the look of the CM17 tile adhesive after adding cement pigments. They are very cheap and come in various colors and there is really no precise recipe to obtaining a color. I obtained every time a different tone and ended up using mostly uh, brown, black, red and white. As I have found out in a rather painful way, the, when the CM17 tile adhesive dries, it leaves very sharp protuberations that can cut through your skin. So the solution to this was to use cleaning gloves. They are thick and protect you uh, against these sharp things that are pointing out. Another solution to the pointy sharp things when the tile adhesive dries is to use a very rough brush to go over them and the best time to do this is when it, the tile adhesive is almost dry but still a little soft so you can break those protuberations off very easily.
after the tile adhesive is completely dry you can use another trick just turn the brush around with the hard wooden part and go with that over the sharp protuberations to simply break them off with mechanical force After adding a thick tile adhesive layer on the hotspot area, I uh, grabbed some black slates and pushed them into the layer. These will aid in the thermoregulation process of your reptile. The hotspot above will heat up the reptile and the sla slates below. These will store heat and constantly radiate it from below to your reptile. Much like in nature when the reptiles are basking on rock formations for example. As I have said there is no exact quantity of pigments you have to use to obtain a particular tone and every time you'll get slight variances. You can see I've experimented quite a lot on the background, but eventually ended up uh, using a dark brown layer behind and the white layer above. And I think the effect is quite nice. Since you have a 3D background and some elements are sticking out more than others, just use two contrasting colors and with the last layer just apply it uh, superficially on the elements that are sticking out and you'll get the effects I, I got. Just run your hands above the surface without pushing too much in and you'll get this effect where only the protuberating surfaces get colored. I also applied five more layers of rubber-based hydro insulation on the steps of the future waterfall to make that part of the background completely waterproof. Now that the custom background was almost finished, I also applied another three layers of hydro insulation on the bottom and the sides to seal off the interface between the floor, the walls and the ceiling with the custom background. A final trick to smoothen out your custom background and avoid any sharp protuberations is to attach a hard nylon brush to your power drill and go over the whole surface again. Finally I applied the last layer of rubber based hydro insulation to cover up polystyrene that got stuck in the last layer just for aesthetic reasons. Now it is time to talk about the heart of the terrarium, the electrical part that will keep everything alive. This is the place where I inserted the hotspot above the hide. We have a Wi-Fi IP camera which I use to monitor my lizard. You can see I have drilled holes into the ceiling to stick out the cables. Another lamp to support a different kind of bulb, a full spectrum natural light bulb. The UVB linear bulb, but I can tell you now I've upgraded from the T8 to a T5, newer standard, it is 50% 50 50 more efficient than the last one and more powerful. And this is a bulb holder from Exoter I got as a gift with reflectors and all that will support uh, UVB 
2.0 and also a natural light bulb to promote plant growth. The waterfall also features a small fogger only for aesthetic purposes it won't really have a drastic effect on humidity and a bigger hole to stick out the cables from the pump, the fogger and the third lamp. It's time to connect everything and route all the cables behind the terrarium out of sight. I will fast forward a little into the future of the production process to show you how I organized all the cables and wiring underneath this custom cabinet I have ordered where I can store all the stuff for the terrarium. So all the wires run in the back of the terrarium including the extra ones I pushed through the venting grate and they go underneath this custom cab cabinet I ordered I didn't build this myself since I don't have the necessary tools there's a nice mask underneath and I've got this socket strip from Airman with 11 sockets that can hold uh, 3.6 kilowatts of course I don't need that much but you if you choose another power strip you have to take into consideration how much your total consumption will be to not over exceed it so I've got everything here, the hotspot, all the lights, uh, the filter from the waterfall, the fogger. Uh, don't mind the night glow here, there's no night glow, it's just a reptile vision lamp. I initially considered installing a night glow, but it's not necessary. Uh, furthermore, more, I connected uh, the UVB lights and the other uh, lights for the plants to uh, smart plugs progr uh, to programmable plugs so I can have a day night cycle and I also have a small smart plug from Tepe Link here it's the most compact one I could find it's the latest model the fogger is connected to it, so I can uh, turn on the fogger in my terrarium from my mo mobile phone. The camera is also there. And uh, a crucial part is this one. I have this climate control unit for the fan uh, that I can find tune it has a sensor, a probe that measures the temperature in the terrarium I can set the temperature the fan runs on a set uh, rotation, rotation rate here, rotation speed and I've set it to a minimum to constantly blow in air but if the temperature inside the terrarium exceeds the set temperature I've set it to 32 degrees the fan will start blowing air at the maximum uh, rotation. This is very important in its hot summer days because the ambient temperature tends to exceed 30 degrees in the terrarium, which is no problem for the tegu, but the temperature gradient is uh, affected and the plants will wither away. So this little device here allows me to keep an optimal temperature gradient even in hot summer days so that my plants won't die the hot part of the terrarium will still get proper uh, proper temperatures for the tag underneath the hot spot and the cooler part will remain cool at around 25 degrees and all of the cables, everything is nicely hidden and masked so you don't see anything. 
Here's the breakdown of the installed lighting system for the so-called dry run of the terrarium. I used Exoterra Reptiglo 10 and upgraded shortly after the Tegu arrived to an Arcadia Dragon. I also have uh, Exoterra Compactos Top Small where a new B2 and an Exoterra Natural Light are installed to promote plant growth. I also have a smart RGB LED strip in the back of the terrarium to further promote plant growth and stimulate sunset and sunrise. The hotspot is comprised out of an Exoterra glow light and a Reptizo mesh because Exoterra doesn't have any protection grill on their glow lights. The heat is emitted from a solar glow, but I will upgrade to an Arcadia clump lamp and a solar raptor UVHID flood lamp. This, this lamp also needs uh, a ballast installed because it is not self ballasted like the solar glow. The second glow light hosts uh, Exoterra Reptile Vision, but I also recommend you up upgrade to the Arcadia clamp lamp. It also comes with a protective grill and is very sturdy. I've installed the protective mesh and the Exoterra Sun Glow hotspot with an integrated UV. It's a two-in-one bulb, not ideally, but I wanted to try it out since the UVB usually needs to be replaced after six months, so it's kind of a waste to throw the bulb away if the hotspot still works. But anyways, I got the uh, neon, the cube for that, the UV cube. I've got the sensor here from the Habistat, digital thermostat. And I set it up to shut the hotspot down if it exceeds 40 degrees. I don't really want to bake my Tegu. It's good to have a backup like this and the thermostat to make sure your terrarium won't burn down on any, or you will bake the reptile inside if temperatures get too hot. And as I said before, I also got a backup to the backup. Here is the other sensor for the fan that will increase the rotations of the fan and blow fresh cool air inside if things get too hot. Okay, I'll now monitor the temperature for a few days and see what I what I get here. If I need to make any adjustments, I'll do them before the reptile arrives. So that everything will be completely set up and be ready for the dessert. It is also time to finally wrap up the thermal insulation of the terrarium as we have done for the bottom and the back of the enclosure. Now the next step is crucial in your insulation process in order to prevent fiberglass dust from accumulating into the room and getting into the ventilation system of the terrarium into your lungs, into your reptiles lungs, you have to cover it up with a barrier. Uh, either you buy fiberglass that is only already encased in foil, which is very expensive, or you encase the whole thing in cheap greenhouse foil and staple it down. Any remaining cracks are sealed with wood sealer. Mm -hmm. 
as a maintenance hatch for the piping for our waterfall, I have built this small box out of spare Tego scraps, placed a hinge, some geotextile, and covered everything up with rubber based hydro insulation. I've inserted our basin and tested out the waterfall and as you can see it just drips down right on the edge of our base. One solution to this conundrum is to use either some cellophane transparent foil or strings to direct the flow straight downwards but I wouldn't settle for this solution since it's not really the most aesthetically pleasing. I even went ahead and drilled into the last step of the waterfall with a Dremel to try to direct the water flow straight down instead of allowing a drip uh, onto the back of the background, but it didn't work either. So I went ahead and just added another step onto my waterfall using the exact same techniques described before to build the rest of the custom backgrounds. Half polystyrene sheet encased in successive layers of tile adhesive, crystallizing hydro insulations and rubber based hydro insulation. Next, I took this narrow tube. You can buy it um, at meter length and just cut a few small pieces that will serve as a channel to guide a nylon wire through to support my sponge here for the waterfall. So it, uh, that sponge will prevent everything from splashing around and reducing backsplash. Okay, I've already placed them on the opposite side, so only this side remains. They will stick a little to uh, this rubber sealant. So just leave a little space from the edge to guide your wire through. And simply place them everywhere you need to. Next, I have my tile grout uh, mixed together with some wet pigment as uh, the surrounding area here to give this contrast of black and white I like so much here and simply apply some grout over the silicone tubes. Be careful not to obstruct the holes. Doesn't really need to have to be a thick layer just so they will stay in place when you want to Place your sponge and hold it to hold it in place.
Okay. Yeah, almost done. Just a little finishing up here. And that's it, you have a nice support area and it will keep the sponge in place and prevent it from being ripped apart by the tegu or displaced. Just use some cleaning gloves as before to apply the grout to, man to manipulate it however you like and to apply some nice texture and contrast to the black background. Just spread it around random randomly between cracks. And don't do what I did here. Okay, I managed to hit this one, but it's okay, no harm done. So here is a sneak peek ahead of what the waterfall looked like with the sponge in place. I was pleased with the improved water flow but I didn't like the volume. The more I considered that the water was still dripping too close to the edge of our basin and I fixed this by simply adding a thick layer of silicone that would close the gap between the last step of the waterfall and the edge of the basin. And here you can see the installed and previously presented maintenance hatch where the tubing from the pump connects to the pipe in the custom background and also gives me plenty of space to make adjustments if needed. So I ended up uh, giving up on the pump, the regular pump. I wanted to install an actual external filter for the pond. Uh, because some detritus and soil will always come into the water and I want the water to be as clean, clean as possible and uh, I want it to be changed as rarely as possible uh, without actually depriving the take of fresh water or risking disease. So, uh, instead of uh, building and introducing a plug into the terrarium, which won't be the smartest idea given the humidity. I opted and for cutting the wire here, discarding the pump 
and uh, attaching then the filter i'll cut the wire here and attach it here with the with these small connectors these are really neat really small connectors for fast uh, for connecting cables fast they have a gel inside and you just press this button here and the cables will stay fixed and uh, it's better than only insulating it with insulating tape so don't go cheap try to find some good connectors they are much safer in your terrarium and won't pose a fire hazard uh, as you can see I used the pieces from the filter some cable ties some um, uh, 90 degree angle uh, plastic tunnels for the wires and organize this a little better. I will also put some cork over it later so that it is an, as in, inconspicuous as possible. In episode 4 we're gonna finish decorating the terrarium both inside and outside. We're gonna talk all about substrate, plants and we are going to get our table.